as God began to show me the message this morning, He showed me that um, we're all the time buying and selling stuff. We're all the time uh, looking at what things are worth uh, in our lives, whether it be a house or a boat or whatever we're purchasing. Is the price right for what we're getting is something that's always on our mind. Before we get to the heart of the Scripture this morning in John, I want to set that Scripture up with another Scripture in Genesis chapter 6. We see that God is the Good Shepherd in John. We will see that. But I also want you to see that God knew what He was purchasing when He purchased us. He knew what He was purchasing when He purchased humanity. In Genesis chapter 6, it said, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was on evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both both man and beast and creeping things and the birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I thought this morning that I've often wondered why God would pay the price for the people of the Old Testament. We look at the Old Testament and we see how that when God blessed them and raised them up from where they were, that they got into such a high and lofty place that they more or less abandoned God. And God turned them over to their enemies. And so they stayed in their enemies' uh, captivity for generations. And then they would cry out to God. And God would raise them up. It sounds like the Mark Mayo story. I don't know about y'all, but I mean, it sounds just like me. And it there is a um, cute little video going on on on, uh, social media. And it's hard to make out what's going on. They have dug a ditch, like for a pipe. I know y'all have seen this. And the guy's trying to get this lamb, this sheep, out of this pipe. And he's just pulling on its leg, pulling on its leg, and finally he pulls it out, and he turns the sheep loose, and the sheep bounces about three times and goes head first right back into the same ditch. You know, and I'm thinking, God, that's what you see when you see me sometimes. But uh, we're not the brightest bulbs in there. But the beautiful thing about it is sometimes we purchase something that has a new coat of paint on it and it fools us and when we buy it or purchase it, we get it home and realize we've been snookered. I don't know that snookered's a word, but today it is. And um, we realize that what we paid for it is not worth what it is. But when it comes to God, God knew exactly When it comes to John 3.16, he knew exactly what he was getting. He knew what the people were all through the Old Testament. He knew what, he knew what they were. So let's go to our scripture this morning in John chapter 10. If you'll look at verses 1, uh, all the way down, it makes a few uh, statements. Jesus said that he is the only way. He is the door. There's not multiple doors. There's only one door and he is that door. And you go down into verses 3 and 4, he talks about that my sheep know my voice. He said, I know their voice and they know my voice because we are one. And he goes on and he talks about uh, some other things. I wish you would read that. But to get to our verse in chapter 10, verse 11, he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Now, how many good shepherds do you have? How many have given their life so that you could live life abundantly? I have one. And Jesus said, that's me. I am the good shepherd because I laid down my life for you. He said, but the hireling, somebody that you hire to watch over, he said, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and he leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. And the hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. 
And I know my sheep, and I am known of by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Now, hold on. He's talking primarily to the uh, Israel. He's talking to the Jews, but he's talking about another sheep. He said, there's other sheep that I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice. He's talking about the Gentiles. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. Mm, Praise God for that. This morning, it took me back, and I won't tarry with it, but when we went to Israel in 15, I saw the place where David walked the sheep. He was a shepherd, and he walked the sheep up from the valley up to where they kept the sheep at, and that, I don't know that this is, you know, guaranteed, but this is where they say it is. And the sheep and the shepherd would have to be back into the cave or the dwelling place for protection before dark. Because after dark, the wolves would come out and it would catch any stray sheep that had hurt their leg or wasn't involved in that. And it took a good shepherd to get the sheep not only to the place of safety, but to keep all the sheep together and to watch them and make sure none of them stray to the left or to the right, but to get them up there. And it was thought that David, he he was a good shepherd, but it was thought that David got his sheep in late one night. And so the later the sheep come into the fold, the wolves that come out earlier could be heard growling to the side. And David wrote the scripture, the 23rd Psalm, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. And I thought about David with his staff, looking out over the sheep, and after hearing the wolves to the left and to the right, the easiest thing for David would have been done was just to run from where he would, where he was. I mean, we can replace the sheep. The easiest thing would have been just left them, but Jesus said that he would have been hireling then. It was David when he looked at these sheep, these weren't just any sheep, these were his sheep. It was his sheep, and if a wolf was going to get those sheep, they were going to have to go through him to get his sheep. He would fight them to the very end of his life to protect these sheep. But David also realized something else. He said, the Lord is my shepherd that even though he was a shepherd over this flock, there was a shepherd that was watching over him as well. (laughs) There was somebody that was protecting him as well. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I thought this morning at church, when Jesus was laying out this scripture, there were some things that he wanted us to understand. He wanted us to understand in our life that there have been hirelings in our life. I thought when talking with young people sometimes, they use a word that I wonder if they know what it even means. I love you. Back when CR was running and a lot of the the, the people that I dealt with during that, they would tell you, I love you. They would tell you 20 times a night, I love you. And then they'd walk out and do a drug deal. And I thought, ugh. They would say, I love the Lord, but then again, they'd be in jail the next day. And, and I look at teenagers and they say, I love you. They tell each other they love you, but then they don't act all the way like they love you. And so I think this morning that if we think about in our life, there have been some hirelings in our life, haven't they? They told us they loved us. They told us they would be there to the very end. Only death will separate us. And trouble comes and they're gone. I thought this morning that as Steve was praying about the wolves, I think all of us have experienced, or if you haven't, you will, experience wolves in your life. Those that come in and try to tear us apart. Those that come in and cast doubts in our heart. Those that come in, and sometimes there are other people 
that the devil uses as wolves in our life. But I like what Steve said. Most of the wolves are inside my head more than there are out there in the world. It's the ones in my head that I battle. It's the ones that Satan brings me down. But I thought this morning the one I really want to concentrate on is the shepherd. Have you ever felt like you didn't deserve to be a Christian? Have you ever felt like that you'd just be better off just giving up? Just like that sheep or that lamb in that video on social media. Sometimes in my life, even today, even in preaching sometimes, I feel like I'm just not good enough. I feel like that God may be, have wasted His blood on me. I feel like sometimes that when God digs me out of a hole and I just prance off so happy and I go right back in a hole and I think, God, why? Why me? Why don't you just let me go and let me ruin my life the way I want to ruin my life, the way I feel like I'm ruining my life? And with this, God always speaks because I'm not you. He said, I am the good shepherd. And if it takes giving my life for you, then that's what I'll do. I thought this morning that church, we as Christians and we as humans sometimes get so caught up in our own self, in our own humanity, and we may resemble the ones back in Genesis, that my thoughts and my attitudes sometimes resemble those back in Genesis. But I thought even when I'm back in Genesis, when God probably wished at that time that I would not he would not have ever made me. In my mind, I think, God, you probably still repent for even making me. God says, I knew what you were when I hung upon that cross. I knew what you were when they put the crown of thorns on my head. I knew what you were. He said, the problem is not figuring out who you are. He said, the problem is, is you figuring out who I am. <laughs> So how many times will the dad go get the son or the daughter when she's been to a party and now she don't have a ride home? How many times will they go and post bail? How many times will they take food to their table? How many times will they go back to the son, the husband, or, or the woman that they're married that's wrecking their life? And every time they call upon the father, the daddy always shows up. He always shows up. And the mama too, don't get me wrong. But God said, I'm the good shepherd. It's not about the ditch that you're in. It's not about the scrapes that you got going into the ditch. He said, it's about you calling upon me. And he said, I'll be there every Every day, every time that you go in the ditch, because that's who I am this morning. A God that don't just look at my sins, but He looks at who I am. And even in the midst of my misery, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I thought so many times... I try to focus on who I am instead of focusing on who He is that every time I mess up a sermon, God's grace is still right there. Every time I don't quote Scripture just exactly right, God's grace is still there. Every time I fall down and I wind up in my misery of who I am, God says, you don't know who you are. He said, let me tell you who you are. He said, you're mine. <laughs> Church, you're mine. Now that don't give us free reign to go out in the world and do anything we want to. No, it don't. But what it does do is God knows what I'm capable of and I'm learning what God's capable of. So this morning I want to ask you, who are the hirelings in your life? Look at your life. Who are the hirelings that were there? That convinced you that they would never leave you. They would never forsake you. They would go with you all the way. And yet they're gone. What are the biggest wolves in your life? In your past? What are the things that absolutely tried their best to destroy you? What are the wolves that's in your mind and in your life now? Sometimes those wolves put on sheep clothing and they walk among us and they act like sheep. They act like they're one of us. 
But we know that at the minute they get a chance, they'll rip us apart for everything that we are. And then I want to ask you this. Think about that for a second. The wolves that have been in your life. The wolves that still plague our minds today. And then I ask you this. How many times has a good shepherd showed up and brought you from where you were, set your feet upon a solid rock, established your goal, and wrapped his arms around you as the prodigal son says, put a robe on his back and a ring on his finger and sandals on his shoes. How many times has God pulled you out of the ditch when you've seen no hope for no tomorrow, when you just wanted to throw your hands up and say, God, just... and let me tell you something. You're not the only one that's ever been there. There was a man named Moses that told God, talking one-on-one with God, he said, blot my name out. He said, when anybody thinks about me, he said, let them not even remember the day I was born. Let my memory... He had some wolves, and some of them were a part of the children of Israel that griped on him continuously. And he got to the point where the wolves felt like he was just tearing him up. And God told Moses, he said, I'll blot out whose name I'll blot out. He said, but I've called you to lead the children this morning. So church, I want to encourage you above anything and everything. The wolf continually tries to keep you in mind of who you are. If you don't know this, let me go ahead and take the truth out of the wolf's message The wolf tries to tell you who you are. Honey, you already know who you are. You know what you're capable of. And a lot of it is not great. But we also know who our shepherd is. Whether it's down beside our bed, whether it's at our parents' or grandparents' or children's funeral, whether it's during a divorce, whether it's during a lot of different things in our life, I get down and out and the wolves just feel like they're just ripping me apart. And I, I get down in the, the depression and, and, and feel like I'm not worthy or nothing. And then I remember the Lord is my shepherd. I don't want for anything. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Behold, a table was prepared before me in the presence of my enemies, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to tell you something that the wolf don't want you to understand. I don't care what you think about yourself. As Jesus come up out of the water, there was a voice from heaven that said, This is my beloved Son. In whom I am well pleased. God loves you more than you'll ever understand. God loves you no matter what you're in, what you're doing. If you are one of His, and the only way you can become one of His is say, Lord, I trust you this morning. I want you into my heart and my life. I want you. When we ask Him in to be our Savior, sometimes it takes a lot of growing to become like Him. And there is a growing process. But don't ever be discouraged while you're in that growing process of being becoming more and more like Him. Because the the more we walk with Him, the more we learn to trust Him. And the more we learn to trust Him, the more fear takes a back seat because as God slayed, God was with Him when He slayed a lion, He was with Him when He slayed a bear. And when David come up upon this uncircumcised, I'll spit it out in a minute, uncircumcised Philistine, He said, Who are you? Who are you? The whole army of Israel hid behind a rock, hid behind a hill. Going, he's big. He's huge. There ain't no ten of us could touch a giant like that. David said, what? Have y'all not ever fought any battles and God showed up every time? He said, remember that time? Remember that time? Guys, remember that time when you didn't feel like you were going to be able to get out of bed and God said, get out of bed. 
Do you remember that time when you buried a loved one and the arms of God wrapped around you? Do you remember that time when you was in ICU or in the hospital and you didn't think you was ever going to get out of there? Do you remember that time? And David said, I remember a time when there was a lion. I remember there was a time when there was a bear. And yes, I was scared then, but every time God come in and pulled me out of the ditch, every time God used me to defeat the enemy that was in front of me, he said, it just made me stronger. He said, who do you think this is and the giant looked at him and he said I'll rip your guts open and feed you to the fowl of the air and David said (laughs) you don't know who you're messing with church this morning we serve a good shepherd one that gives his life for the sheep He said the same spirit that was in him is the same spirit that's with us. He said, I will empower you from power on high that you will ask if you walk in his commandments and do his good will. He said, you can ask whatsoever you want, what you need. And he said, it shall be given to you. But more than that, there's coming a day he could have left the Gentiles out. And this morning we had no hope But if you're looking at 16th verse, he said, there's some more sheep. (laughs) And I got plans for Saul. Saul's going to go gather those sheep in. But in a few days, he said, there's some more sheep out there. He said, I'm going to bring them together and there's going to be one flock and one shepherd of that flock. This morning as the band comes together, I'm sorry, the worship team, as they come up and sing this morning, If you need to pray, pray. But more than anything, I'm going to have my back towards you. But more than anything this morning, while we sing, I want you to take the frown that the devil has put on your face because of reminding you who you are and what you are. And I want you to listen to God as God tells you, you are mine. He said, I know his voice and he knows our voice. So this morning as they sing, call out to him. Listen to the voice of confirmation that you are my child. If you are saved, a born again Christian this morning, you don't belong to yourself. You don't belong to a hireling and you surely don't belong to a wolf. But you are the good shepherd. And he paid a magnificent price to have fellowship with you. Stand with us this morning.